What's going on everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode three. The marathon um, continues. I almost forgot. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with the thumbs up or thumbs down and hit the notification button so you would know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode... It was okay, you know, it wasn't, uh, I felt like a lot of the episode didn't have a lot of anything to go off of, and so they played a lot of the episodes or a lot of the scenarios off of Nipsey's death, which, I mean, it's not a bad thing because, yes, the marathon continues. We continuously need to know about Nipsey and the contributions that he made to the community and everything that he did. That's great. I'm all about that. But there wasn't a lot to any of the storylines. And so I felt like a lot of the storylines in this particular episode went around Nipsey's death. That's just me. That's just how I felt. Y'all, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into the review. Y'all, so the episode picks up where it left off last time. Um, Apple Watts and Lyrica end up walking up into some kind of listening party that, um, what's his name, Mr. Ray was having or whatever, right? And so Summer Bunny is there. And of course, we already know Summer Bunny is a dude that, um, what's the motherfucking, um, A1 that he messed around with or whatever, right? And so... Soon as they walk in, yes, Apple is giving off a lot of steam because Apple does not like Summer Bunny. Her and Summer Bunny got into it on the last episode. Everybody knows that she don't like Summer Bunny or whatever, right? So Ray J, of course, like we already know, they ain't got nobody else to really be messy this episode because, you know, Brooke ain't on there. So Ray done took the spot of being a messy person because right immediately when he was introduced to Summer Bunny, he was like, oh, you know the homie A1, huh? Yeah, I know you. So Princess was like, oh, that's her? That's, you know, that's what happened on the last episode or whatever, right? So immediately, Summer Bunny got a whole attitude. Like, she mad. Her and Apple Watch start getting into it. She starts then coming for Lyrica. And going to Lyrica like, well, what you want? What you want? Like, Lyrica's like, wait a minute. What, what do I want? I just walked up in here in the party. What the hell is you talking about? Summer Bunny got a lot of attitude. For a chick that purposely slept with a married man to put it on social media just to get clout. She did that on purpose. But she got a lot of attitude with Lyrica for whatever reason. And I understand a lot of that comes from, like I said, her and Apple got into it. They got into it because Apple was sticking up for her homegirl, Lyrica. Shout out to Apple. You know, I don't promote violence or nothing like that on this channel. That's not what I'm about. But you know what I'm saying? I don't support the hoes neither. And she willingly did it on purpose just to put it on social media just to get some clout off of it, right? So I'm, I'm getting a little bit out from the story. So they start going back and forth. Security has to come and carry Summer Bunny out. She got a little blonde head homeboy with her that act like he finna go run up on on um, Lyrica and A1 and um, not Lyrica and A1 on um, Lyrica and Apple and all of them. Cause see, Princess got up in it too. You already know Princess is a ride or die bitch. That's a ride or die homegirl. You ain't got to say nothing but to the her, she TTG, she ready to go. Ray had to go ahead and clear her ass up. Ray already knew, let me get my wife, cause when she pop off, shit really finna pop off. So, they was all trying to go over there on Summer Bunny's ass and her little blonde head homeboy. So security had to come, carry them out. She outside going crazy, yelling. Like, I will mess these hoes up, I do this. Girl, again, really loud. Really a lot with this right here. Very loud. Very disrespectful. For what? When you, you the one, sweetie, boo-boo, what? So Yo-Yo comes. She calms Lyrica down. And she's like, look, if I can calm her down, I want y'all to sit down and I want y'all to have a discussion. So, you know, I don't like to see women in the industry fighting and getting into it. Lyrica like, I don't want to talk to this hoe. I ain't got no problem. You know, I don't want to talk to this bitch. We've already got to establish everything that I need to know. Yo-Yo's like, yes, but I just want y'all to, to try to work it out. Yeah, I get it, Yo-Yo. I get it. You don't want to have no women to have no problems with each other, yada, yada, yada. But it's just some, some shit. It, no. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. So, Yo-Yo gets Lyrica and uh, Summer Bunny. They both sitting down. First of all, they sitting side by side, like real close. Lyrica. 
that could have been your opportunity. I'm, let me stop. Moving on from that. Moving on from that. So y'all know it's like, okay, so somebody's got to say something. There's got to be some kind of conversation that needs to happen. Some of us like, uh, it's not my husband. Strike one right there. That would have been the end of the conversation right there. You already coming at me sideways, disrespectful and all of this shit. It don't matter. Nothing else. It don't matter. It don't matter. That would have been the end of the discussion right there. But they continued on. So Lyrica asked her, so what's up? Did you mess around with my husband? I seen y'all on a FaceTime. Like, what was it? So my buddy was like, yeah, a FaceTime. Mm-hmm, that's what it was. So Lyrica was like, all right, you know what? That's all I needed to hear. Everybody have a blessed night. whoop de whoop I'm out. She walk outside or whatever. Soon as she outside waiting on her, on her car, Summer Bunny come outside. Lyrica's like, okay, what? What? What you got to say? Summer Bunny going to have the nerve to say, it's hard for me to come to you as a woman, but I'm coming to you as a woman to let you know that, yes, A1 and I did have something going on. We have had sex. And um, Lyrica asked her how many times like it even goddamn matter. She said it happened a couple of times, multiple times. And she was like, okay, that's all I wanted to know. I don't understand why you got all this anger and this animosity towards me. Some of my is like, because you've been talking shit about me in the blogs. You've been talking crap about me in the blogs, yada, yada, yada. Lyrica's like, look here. I ain't said nothing about you. You ain't heard nothing about your name come out my mouth, period. You got all this animosity towards me, towards what? Somebody's like, no, you need to take that. You need to take that towards your husband. She gets mad, like somebody did her wrong. She walks off, and Lyrica's like, yeah, bitch, whatever, bye, yeah, yeah. She was like, yeah, bye. Hopefully, I won't sleep with your husband again. Bitch, what? Girl, Lyrica, I give it to you. You had a whole lot of restraint. Because any other woman in your position would have took her whole head off her body. That was absolutely disrespectful. And look here. This is what I'm saying. It's It don't make it right one way or the other whether she knew that they were married, whether she didn't know about them being married. She knew that he was married and like Lyrica said, they are public with it. She did it on purpose. On purpose. Just to put it out there in the public. Just to, to ruin their marriage on purpose. If you really wanted her to know, if you wanted to come to her woman to woman, you could have sent her some in her DMs. It could have been nobody that knew that but y'all three. But you didn't want just her to know. You wanted the world to know that. And that's what's so messed up about it. That's why people shouldn't have no respect or nothing for you for that. And it's like, I don't know if she's trying to redo her image, but girl... Boo-boo. You coming at the wife for the wife getting mad for you exposing her husband because you did it on purpose. Like, you saying that you mad because people are coming at you in the blogs, but you giving them something to talk about in the blogs. I'm just saying, if it walk like a duck, talk like a duck, quack like a duck, bitch, it's a duck. Y'all, so everybody gets word of Nipsey's death. Everybody's mourning him. Yo-Yo and Apple go out to his store, The Marathon, because, of course, you know, they're from Crenshaw. They're from that whole neighborhood and all that. So they go out there to the store to pay their respects to him because, you know, everybody's in mourning. The whole city is in mourning. Yo-Yo remembers when she met Nipsey, um, he came into the store. He had his daughter Imani with him. He had his music bumping. Everybody was respecting him. He was the man on the city on the block. They out there paying respects. Big ups to Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. We love you. We miss you. Moving on from that. Y'all, April Jones, Zell Swag, and Paris, y'all. They ass is working out on the hill. I like Zell Swags. I thought he was crazy as hell when he wasn't on the last season, season before that. When he damn near beat the brakes off of uh, Mr. Ray. He's on there now. He said he recognized that he was crazy as hell back then, so he's changed his ways. He cut his hair off. He done worked out. I like Zells. That's my boy. And I like Paris, too. Paris, as we know, is the one that got into it with K. Michelle. K. Michelle tried to drag this girl name through the mud. And I like K. Michelle, but I don't like that she tried to do that girl like that. To this day, I don't like that she tried to do that girl like that. Regardless of what she did or didn't do, I don't like that she tried to drag that girl like that. Anyways, they are working out because Paris is saying that 
she wants to lose some weight so she can get into more roles. She don't want to be, you know, the, the big sidekick or whatever. Basically, they just trying to work out, trying to lose some weight, yada, yada, yada. Why? Whoop, the whoop. So, April is um, telling them how she went to K. Michelle's listening party and how she met this girl named Danny B. I think that was her. Or Brittany B. That was her name. Brittany B. And how Brittany B was basically trying to downplay everything that she had done or so far as an artist. And how she was possibly thinking about going on tour with Moniece when Moniece had invited her to go on tour with her. Now, I'm with them. They, they were clowning her like, y'all, shit, we be better off going on tour than y'all would. Like, now, now one of y'all really got a whole lot of talent, talent to be going on tour to do something like that. So... We don't see what happened from that, y'all. It wasn't a whole lot to happen that. That whole little scene was boring. But I just like Zells. And I like Paris. So, hey. Now, next we got Fizz and Spectacular. They're going to um, see Jack at the radio station. They're talking about, you know, how they're on tour with B2K and the whole Millennium thing right now. And uh, Pretty Ricky is on tour. Jack is asking them, how's everything going on tour? Is everybody getting along? Because, of course, we know it's a whole bunch of drama. Fizz is talking about how Raz is going in and out of... Quitting the group, then he back. Quitting the group, quit, uh, coming back, yada, yada, yada. So he's saying that, you know, hopefully they can work things out through the rest of the tour so they can get that bag, what they're trying to get through. The same thing with um, Spectacular. He's saying that so far, so good on the road with Pretty Ricky. Yes, they got their ups and downs, but everybody's pretty much on the same page when it comes to getting his bag, getting his coin, getting his money. And, of course, they're talking about Nipsey's death as well, how it impacted them. I did not know that Fizz was a Slauson boy as well. He was from Crenshaw. I knew he was from the hood in California. I didn't know he was from Crenshaw, though. Shout out to them Slauson boys, okay? So, he was talking about how he met Nipsey, how they talked about being young hustlers back in the day when they were kids, how they wanted to come up, how they wanted to help the community, yada, yada, yada. It was really cute. They was at the radio station, y'all. What up, Jack? Let your homegirl come on one of your radio stations. Let me do an interview. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Moving on from there. Next time. up, y'all, we meet Mickey Monday. Mickey Monday, now, I, 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 actually, I like him, okay? I ain't gonna lie. First, I was like, who the hell is this? But, I was first introduced to him because I follow his girlfriend, Slick Woods. If you don't know who Slick Woods is, she's a beautiful young model. She's unique as hell. She's bomb as hell. And it will make sense that the both of them are together because they, they're like yin and yang. But, um... He's this new rapper. He went to the Yo-Yo School of Hip Hop, graduated from there. And um, he's doing like this little listening party, little private listening party, whatever, right? And so Yo-Yo is there. Apple Watts is there. Corrupt is there. And so Corrupt is basically saying like how he basically, he's promoting Mickey Monday, saying that he's good. He thinks that he's bomb. You know, asking his input, how does he think he will be perceived as, you know, looking. Because when you see Mickey Monday, he's a white boy with long, thick, curly hair tattoos everywhere don't like to wear no shirt but to wear a jacket like his chesticles out and all of that like he's a typical rock and roll looking white boy but he said he grew up in the hood he was the only white boy in the hood so when he was over there with the black kids or whatever they was you know making fun of him when he was over there with the white kids they were making fun of him trying to say he was trying to be something that he wasn't but ultimately when you got to know him he just was who he was and I'm, that's somebody that I'm gonna look out for I think he gonna be somebody good just cause he got he seemed like he got that something to him I'm gonna look out for you Mickey Monday I'm going to look out for you. So, Apple and Yo-Yo are talking. Yo-Yo is, um, you know, basically trying to get in Apple's head. Like, look here. What the hell was that that happened at Mr. Ray's event the other day? You know, I understand that Lyrica is your homegirl. And you trying to be there for your homegirl. Have her back. Yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, you got to understand. Like, look here. You can't be going off and inserting yourself in other people's business. And not only that, you trying to change your look. And you trying to get people to look at you a different way. When you going off like that. People ain't going to want to deal with you. Um, Yo-Yo was saying that Apple is from the, the newer generation the newer generation where they quick to go off with their hands and they want to see who bark is bigger and, you know, who can do this and that, yada, yada, yada. So I understand what, um, what Yo-Yo is coming from because I'm old school myself. But at the same time, some of these heifers don't understand when you try to use your words with them. I don't promote violence in no way. I... 
Anybody that knows me know I'd be the first one to tell you. I ain't a killer, but damn it, don't push me. Next up, y'all, we have Jason Lee on Hollywood Unlocked. He's talking with Yo-Yo. Um, once again, they're talking about Nip Nipsey Hussle's death and how his um, death affected the community, what it did to... Um, you know, just what it did to everybody. Jason Lee actually shared a story that was really sad. He um, shared a story about how his brother got killed in front of him. He was saying that it was his 19th birthday, I think it was, some, some, something like that. He was having a party. These two girls got into an argument. One girl pulled out a gun and started shooting. Somebody that was at the party told him, hey, are you Reggie's brother? He was like, yeah. He said, Reggie just got shot. He goes over there, sees his brother. Last thing he says to his brother before his brother dies is that I love you. He starts crying in the studio. It was super sad. Right in that moment, it took that for me to see Jason Lee as a human being. Because actually this episode when he shared his story about his mom being a prostitute and being addicted to drugs. Because beforehand, if you don't know nothing about Jason Lee but you just see how he just dogs everybody, you don't see him as being a human being. But it took this episode, I ain't gonna lie, for me to see him as like, okay, damn, he's a real person. He comes from real pain. You know, that could be a reason why he's put up this barrier because he did say after his brother got killed that that caused him to drink a lot, not live his life right. Like he was just out there while and wasn't taking care of himself. But he did say recently that he's gotten sober. He's starting to take care of himself and he looks good. I like Jason Lee now. He's on my good list. We might send you a call for Christmas, Jason. Y'all, Mama Pam is back, baby. She back, she got her wigs, and she ready to do the damn thing. She went and picked up A1 from the airport or whatever, right? A1 got, um, he has a performance that night, where wherever he's back at, Hollywood, that's where he at. He got a performance with T-Pain or whatever that night. So Mama Pam came to pick him up from the airport. So she's picking him up and she's telling him like, look here, I seen everything that went on in the blogs. I need to know, did you mess with Summer Bunny or what? Like she coming at that dude hard now. Side note, Mama Pam. Mama Pam had her nose pierced and she had a Monroe. I got a, I have a, you know, closed up one right here. But Mama Pam, Mama Pam didn't have no piercers in there. She had full blown earrings in them joints. She didn't have little studs, little cutesy, like, ew, ew, no. She had a full on hoop right here and a full heart right here, like a full one, like for real, for real. I was like, Mama Pam, what is you doing? Girl, you supposed to have studs in them. Them not for real, for real earrings. Like, what is you doing, Mama Pam? Mama Pam said, you got me messed up. I need to know, nigga. I got to know because you need to go and talk to your wife. You got a whole family out here. This is the first time. Shout out to you. Cheers to you, Mama Pam. Because Mama Pam ain't never stood up for Lyrica before. This is the first time that Mama Pam stood up for Lyrica and she was right. You need to go talk to your wife. Because you out here laying it low and spreading it wide. And it's all up here in the blogs and in the media and stuff. So you need to let your wife know something. Shout out to you, Mama Pam. Cheers to you and your wig and your two earrings. We gonna give you the props that you need, mama. I ain't even mad at Y'all, so B2K performs. The whole time, they only got the camera on J-Bug and Fizz. I'm guessing um, uh, Raz B and Omarion was like, uh-uh, I don't want nothing to do with the foolishness. You already know, Omarion is over here living his best zen life. He ain't going back and forth with you niggas. <laughs> He's living his best life. <laughs> so the whole time, they only showing Fizz and they showing um, Jay Bug. Afterwards, they on the bus. Um, Fizz is telling Jay Bug about how he gave up his place, how he's been crashing over there at April's house, and how April made the suggestion about them moving in together. So Jay Bug, what? Like, so what y'all are super best friends, superhero warriors? Like, what is going on with y'all? What is all of this? Jay Bug's only concern is that whatever y'all got going on, long as they don't mess up this here, Long as they don't mess up the bag. That's all he worried about. Whatever y'all doing is what y'all doing. I ain't got no business in that. But whatever y'all doing, like he say, it needs to be like Halloween, baby. Y'all need to put a mask on till we get this bag, till we get this coin. I ain't even mad at him. But at this point again, y'all are lying. Everybody already know that y'all are messing around, but you still trying to keep it from everybody in this 
Let me stop. Um, let me stop. Let me stop. Y'all, so um, Lyrica and her homegirl pop up on A1. He's doing his concert with T-Pain. She backstage or whatever. He, as soon as he see her, he lock eyes. He like, oh, damn. Uh. So, y'all, she asked him, like, you know, what's up? I've been seeing all of this on the blogs. Like, I need to know, like, what's good? Hold up, though. Side note. Y'all, what is the name brand of A1's clothes? Did y'all see the nigga name brand clothes? Is t t t t t t Girl, you know you want that, that. What is that? What is the name of this name brand? I need to know. What does the T-U-H stand for? Because all I see is <laughs> but she like, look here, I need to know. I'm asking you straight up. Did you mess with Summer Bunny? It take him a minute. He beating around the bush because her homegirl is there. Her homegirl trying to chime in and all this. She like, look here, boo-boo. I got this. Bitch, I got this. So she like, look here. I'm going to need you to go ahead and step out. You and your big scoop ball head ass security guard and your manager. Y'all go get the hell on up on up out of here too. She kicks everybody out. And so she like, A1, what's good? What's good, dude? Are you, are you messing around with this bitch or what? Finally, he does admit that he has had sex with Summer Bunny. She like, all right, that's what's up. That's what's up. Then he says... Why are you talking about that's what's up? You did the same thing too, Lyrica. Oh, girl. What? Girl. Bitch, so I've been thinking this whole time that your hands been clean, but really actual factually what's really been going on, it wasn't Safari that you was out here creeping and deeping with. The reason why he was worried about the baby being his, it was a whole other nigga. Now, A1 says that she cheated last year, but they decided it would be a good look for the both of them if they didn't say anything about it. Now, I'm sure it's A1 as a man, he don't want it to be known that his wife is out there laying it low and spraying the wild with somebody else but she also didn't want the look of her out there possibly having a baby with somebody else but they tried to put it off on safari and you know what i thought about when i was watching this did y'all remember if you was watching when they was asking safari did you mess with lyrica are y'all messing around he kept saying there's more to the story I, there's more to the story. He never said yes. He never said no. But he kept saying that there was more to the story. I'm thinking Safari ass knew that she was messing around with somebody else. But he didn't want to say who. Or he was contractually ob obligated or whatever. He couldn't say who. But after he said that, I was like, girl, I was riding for you. We was all rooting for you. Come to find out. She's doing the same damn thing that this nigga doing. I'm like, y'all, girl. Y'all, at this point, I'm like, look here. Either y'all niggas gonna cheat in peace or y'all gonna get a divorce. Because this tit for tat that y'all doing, like he say, he cheat, she cheat. He cheat, she cheat. They just going back and forth. So I'm gonna need y'all niggas to either cheat in peace or move on from it. Because this here, what y'all doing, it ain't right for the baby. It ain't right for the baby. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. Um, it ended with a memorial for um, Nipsey Hussle. Again, everybody was just coming out talking about how much he impacted the community, how much he, how, um, he impacted, you know, them as a whole, the music, the hip-hop, the culture, the all of that, y'all. That was the end of the episode right there. Let me know what y'all think about this review, y'all. If y'all seen the episode, drop down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought. If y'all know what the hell the name brand of A1's damn is, holla at auntie. Let me know. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.